Welcome to Liesl's Artistic Studio. The air is getting colder now, autumn is reaching its end, and winter is on its way. So I promise this is my last autumn tutorial for the year. After this fun autumn landscape, next week we'll move on to painting for Christmas. Now the sketch for this is pretty simple and undetailed, so I'm going to go over this really quickly for those of you who enjoy drawing. But you could also just freehand this painting without a base drawing at all, or as a third option, I will have this outline available on my Etsy shop for sale if you'd rather go that route. I'll put a link to my shop in the description of this video if you're interested. So first I've gone ahead and drawn a horizon line about a third of the way up from the bottom of the page. And then along that horizon line, I am now just penciling in where some of the background trees and bushes might be. Now I'll quickly draw the trunk of the main tree as well as the general area and size of where the leaves are going to go. Just keep in mind, your picture doesn't have to look exactly like mine. This is just a general idea. But even then, I'm not going to follow these lines perfectly when I get to painting, so don't stress about this drawing too much. Next, I'll draw in a second, skinnier tree that's going to be behind this first one. Now, if you'd like, add in some extra branches stemming from the trunk and even peeking out here and there amongst the leafy area. Let's draw in some of the foreground next by adding in some curved lines that can be a little road or a pathway. Next over here in the fields, I'm going to add in some posts and crossbars for some little wooden rustic fences. At this point, you can choose to keep this drawing simple by just keeping these crossbars straight, or if you'd like to, you can round off some of the ends. And on this fence over here, don't forget to erase or add lines to help make this tree trunk appear like it's behind the fence. Then I'll add in some little grass lines here and there, focusing them mostly at the base of the fences or trees and along the road's edge. And lastly, let's pencil in some shadow shapes and lines in the road or pathway. Now, 
now that our drawing is done, let's gather up our painting supplies for today. And as a quick side note, any of the supplies you see me using today will be listed in the description of this video if you're interested in brands, names, prices, etc. For my brushes today, I'm using Grabby brand sizes 0 and 3, but you can use whatever brushes you would like or have on hand. My suggestion is having a larger one for the washes and larger spaces, and a smaller one for the small spaces and detail work. I'm also going to really quickly tape my watercolor paper down today using some artist tape because I will be using quite a bit of water and this is going to help keep the warping down a little bit. All right, let's wet down this larger brush and start off by painting a very light blue sky in the background. This color here is ultramarine blue and it's pretty watered down. Like I said, I want this to be very light. Now I'll take some clean water and paint it all over the sky area with just water first. And actually, I'm also going to paint water right down to the horizon line, covering these distant trees in the background. Next, I'll take this light ultramarine blue and start dabbing and painting in that color along this wet area, as well as a few spaces within the tree leaves, just in case I choose to have some open gaps in the leaves that would show the sky back behind. I'm going to paint some of these very distant background trees next. So I'll add a bit of hooker's green to my ultramarine blue and paint two or three trees with this color. Now my paper here is still a little wet from painting the sky a minute ago, which is actually what I want. This way, these trees will fade and blur slightly, helping give that effect of them being off in the distance. Now I'll take a little bit of gamboge and put some of this golden yellow at the tops of these distant trees. And next, I think I'll add in some cadmium red to this gamboge for a red-orange color, and I'll paint that in at the bottoms of these trees. Keep in mind also that we still want these trees to be fairly light in vibrance and value. We want to see that they're there, but we don't want them to overpower the trees that we're going to be painting in the foreground. If you feel like these trees need a little bit more color or emphasis, you can add in a little bit of yellow orange, which I've made by mixing together cadmium orange with some gamboge. And I might even add in a touch more of this red too. You should know I don't actually paint landscapes very often. I feel like they are not my forte, but hopefully this will turn out okay. And most importantly, I hope that we'll have fun giving it a try. Now, my initial drawing didn't have any background trees on this side of the trunk, but I think I'm going to put in a few anyway. All right, let's move on to painting in some of this foreground area. I'll start on the right side here, again painting the whole area with water first, even painting over the fence. We'll paint the fence a darker color over the top of this later. Now I'll take some of these same colors we've already mixed up and add that in here. I'm painting this orange or red mostly on the edges of this right side and up by these trees, and then maybe a little bit here in the middle. Then I'll add in more of a golden yellow here at the top of the horizon and then anywhere throughout that needs it. Now let's paint in some beginnings of the roadside grasses and shadows. So let's add in some more red to our tray and maybe let's make it a shade darker by adding in some burnt umber. Then while the foreground is still a little wet, I'll add in some hints of darker grass along the edges of the roadside here. And I think I'll even spread some of this color out into the road area just a little bit for a shadowed look. Now don't focus or worry too much about this part. We are going to come back to this grass later after it's dry and then add in the details. This is just getting the good base color down. 
I think I'm going to take some burnt umber now and add a little bit of color into that to help darken the base of this grass a little bit more. I may even add in some ivory black too as I move towards the bottom corner. Now I'm just using a wet brush to spread some of this color out into the road. Just make sure that when you're adding the shadow sections in the road that you also leave some white or empty spaces that can be the sunshine peeking through the tree branches. Let's mix up a little ultramarine blue with a little bit of deoxazine purple and use that color to blend into these shadows a little bit. Now here on this other side of the road, I'll kind of do the same thing, starting with a dark red along the edges, spanning into the road a little ways, and then adding in the burnt umber and dark blue for the shadows. I really do like to try to give helpful hints and tips with each and every tutorial I put out. So if you're finding this helpful or would like to see more of my tutorials, I hope you'll consider subscribing so you don't miss out on new and upcoming tips every week that will help you improve your watercolor. I'm actually going to take this red orange or dark red now and also add some extra dots of color here on the pathway to represent some fallen leaves from the tree. Now let's paint the rest of this ground area, again starting with water first, then adding in some yellow at the top and red orange in the middle or base. You'll notice that as I move on to this red-orange color, I'm going to paint this in with some grass-like strokes. I'll paint in some more of the grass lines closer to the base using burnt umber and maybe even just a touch of ivory black. But again, as I said before, don't try to make this grass perfect right now, especially because since it's wet, it's going to blend and bleed a little bit. But we will come back to this after it's dry and add in a little bit more detail work. Okay, while all of that dries, let's get some colors ready for the leaves of these main foreground trees. So first, let's mix up some gamboge with some cadmium orange for a nice, rich yellow-orange color. Then we'll have some pure gamboge for a golden yellow. Some cadmium red mixed with cadmium orange for a red orange. And lastly, some cadmium red mixed with burnt umber for a dark reddish brown. Now let's wet down the leafy area for this second background or smaller tree with water first, and then we'll start placing in the color. Then when we're ready to start adding in the color, Basically, I'm going to be painting this moving from light colors to dark colors and from the top of the tree to the bottom. So my yellow will be right here at the very top, then we'll transition to the orange. Now I'm just dabbing in the color with more of a circular motion rather than painting it in with strokes. This is going to leave some spaces that may not have as much color as others that are going to help create more of a bushy or a fluffy look. Then down here at the bottom, we'll add in this reddish brown for more of a shadow look here on the underside or bottom of the leaves. I feel like this is looking pretty good so far, but I think that mine needs a little bit more vibrancy to it. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more of the red and orange to this bottom half of the tree. Let's start transitioning now to the other tree by dabbing in a little bit of this blue-green from earlier at the base and kind of in the middle area of the tree. Now I'll add in some water on the leaves of this next tree, and this time I am leaving a few spaces here and there without any water so that the color won't bleed there, and this is going to leave me some open gaps in the branches. Now I'll just paint this tree in a similar way as the first, moving again from light to dark and top to bottom.
All right, I do feel like I should mention here that after I finished this step, I looked at this painting and thought, this looks terrible. In fact, I came close to giving up on this altogether, but I decided to finish it anyway and see what the end results would be. And I have to say, I'm glad I stuck it out because I discovered that it is the details that I added in near the end of this that made this painting come to life. And actually, it made it look half decent. So if you're feeling the same way as I did, I just want to encourage you to stick it out to the end and you may be pleasantly surprised by the results. Okay, at this point, I have let the leaves on the branches completely dry so that now I can go back in one more time and add in some dots of color on the dry paper that are going to look more like individual leaves rather than one big lump of color. All right, congratulations for making it this far because it's time to switch over to our smaller brush now and paint in some of this detail work that really makes this painting pop. So first, I'll take some of this reddish brown and with my small brush, I'm just going to re-emphasize and repaint some of this grass here under the tree and alongside the road's edge. I think I might even paint in some yellow grass here in the background near the fence. Now I'm going to add in a line of some darker colors like that dark red or maybe even some ivory black right here at the edge of the road under the grass to re-emphasize the shadow area. Next, I'll just do that same thing again over on this other side of the road. All right, the last thing to do to our painting is paint in the fences and trunks of the trees. This is going to be the darkest color on our whole painting so far. So let's mix together some burnt umber with some ivory black for a really nice dark brown color. Now I'll paint in a line of color on one side or edge of the fence post. Then I'll get a small amount of water on the tip of my brush and spread that color out to the other side of the post. The fun thing about painting it this way is that it naturally causes a gradient of color so that it's a little darker where the paint is initially put on and then it's lighter on the other side when you spread it with the water. I'll paint these crossbar posts the same way, but I'll paint the darker color on the bottom half and spread it with water to the top half. Now just go ahead and finish off all the fences. All right, for our last step to this painting, let's paint the main trunks of the trees as well as a few branches throughout the leaves.
you'll notice I'm still painting this brown up through the tree, showing it in between the bunches of leaves, and I'll also add in some branches that appear to be stemming out from the main trunk as well. It also might be a fun addition to paint in some really thin lines to represent trunks on these trees in the very distant background. And that's it for today's fun autumn landscape painting and my final autumn tutorial for the season. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.